What's up, everybody? Welcome to a new English bit. I'm Katya. Today, I've got a grammar lesson for you, but not any grammar lesson. Today, we're going to master an advanced grammar point that even advanced English speakers might not be aware of. We're going to look at the difference between neither and none. I think it can be super useful. Are you ready? If so, let's jump into the lesson. First, we're going to focus on neither. It can be pronounced as neither or neither. The first point, you can use neither of you, of us, of them. When you want to say that it's not one nor the other, of two people or things. The key point here is that there are only two people or things in existence. After neither of, we can use both a singular or plural verb. A plural one is more informal. And now let's look at some examples. The first one, neither of you rose to the challenge. Another example, neither of us knows or know what happened. And one more example, neither of them showed up. The phrasal verb to show up means to arrive. After neither, we can use a singular noun. And in this case, it takes a singular verb. For example, neither idea is good. In this case, we can only say is good and not are. And one more example here, Neither guy is good looking. We can also say neither of followed by plural countable nouns with a determiner. For example, his, her, my, or the definite article the. And once again, we can use both a singular or plural verb. Plural is informal. Let's look at three examples. The first one, neither of my legs is sore. Or we can also say are sore, which is more common in spoken English. Another example, neither of his parents is or are retired. And one more example here, neither of the books is or are interesting. And now it's one to none. It's pronounced exactly the same as monja, none. So, what's the difference between none and neither? So, as you remember, neither is used to talk about two things or people, while none refers to three or more people or things. After none, we can use a singular verb or a plural verb, which is more common in spoken English. Let's look at three examples. None of you is or are right. The second example, none of us speak or speaks French. And the last example here, none of them smokes or smoke. A very important point here is that after none, we can't use directly a noun. We have to add of, none of, and then a noun. If we have none of, followed by an uncountable noun. In this case, we have to use a singular verb. Two examples, none of the work was done. And one more example here, none of the effort was worthwhile. And if none of is followed by a plural noun or a singular noun referring to a group of people or things, in this case, we can use either a singular verb or a plural verb after it. Once again, a plural verb is more used in spoken English. For example, none of the books is or are good. So in this case, remember, we talk about three or more books, not two. And one more example here, none of the candidates was or were hired. And one more option is to use no followed by a noun. For example, no pressure. Another example, no trips were made 
last year. And one more example, no flights were cancelled. And guys, before we continue and learn more interesting things, just a super quick reminder, please make sure you subscribe to English Bits if you like my channel and also press the bell icon. And if you enjoy today's lesson, please don't forget to like it. Thank you very much. And now I've got a bonus structure for you, neither nor. We use it to say that two or more things aren't true. Sure. And after this structure, we can use both a singular or a plural verb. And once again, a plural one is more common in spoken English. And now a few examples. The first one, neither Spain nor France won the championship. Neither Tom nor James is or are here. I neither know nor care what he's up to. And one more example here, it's neither cold nor hot today. This structure neither nor is a bit formal and if you want to sound more informal, you can say and not either. Two examples, I didn't like the movie and he didn't either. And the last example here, it didn't rain yesterday and today it hasn't either. And now, if you're a Spanish speaker, I've got an activity for you. I've prepared 11 sentences and you're going to translate my sentences from Spanish into English and we're going to practice everything we've learned today. So the first sentence I want you to translate from Spanish into English is Ninguno de nosotros dos viajó al extranjero el año pasado. If you want, you can pause the video, you can write it down, and now I'm gonna give you the correct sentence. And the correct sentence would be Neither of us traveled abroad last year. If it's correct, well done and put a tick. The second sentence Ninguno de ellos dos supo que hacer. So translate this sentence and now I'm gonna give you the correct sentence Neither of them knew what to do. The third sentence Ninguno de ellos hicieron los deberes. In this case we talk about three or more people. So once again pause the video if you need and write down the sentence. And the correct sentence would be none of them did homework. So in this case we have to use none of them and not neither because we've got three or more people. Number four, ninguno de ellos tres habla chino. So here we've got three people. The correct sentence is none of them speaks or we can also say speak Chinese. Number five, ningún coche es barato. So once again, think or write it down. The correct answer, we've got two possibilities. We can say neither car is cheap or another option is neither of the cars is or are cheap. Number six, ningún médico me ayudó. In this case, we've got two doctors. And once again, we can say it in two different ways. The first one, neither doctor helped me. And the second option, neither of the doctors helped me. Number seven, ningún remedio fue efectivo. In this case, we refer to three or more remedies. And here we also have two possibilities. We can say none of the remedies was or were effective or no remedies were effective. Number eight, no es ni fácil ni difícil. So once again, translate this sentence. And the correct sentence is it's neither easy nor difficult. Number nine, no es ni bueno ni malo. Once again, if you want and if you need, pause the video and write it down. And the correct sentence is it's neither good nor bad. And two more sentences. 
Number nine. No fui al gimnasio ni a correr. The correct sentence would be I neither went to the gym nor went running. Or we can also say went for a run. And the last sentence Ni tú ni yo nos vamos a rendir. And the correct sentence would be Neither you nor me will give up. So guys, that's it for today. I really hope you enjoyed today's lesson and found it useful. I really think it's a very advanced grammar point, a bit confusing at the same time, and not many English learners know about this aspect. And if you translated the sentences, please let me know how many you've got right. And of course, if you enjoyed today's lesson, please don't forget to give it a huge thumbs up, to subscribe to English Bits and catch me on Instagram. With that being said, thanks for watching today's lesson and see you next Wednesday. Ciao for now!